Buying a house in Concord, Harrisburg, Kannapolis, Cabarrus County, frankly, anywhere in the Charlotte area. Okay, all of North Carolina. One of the questions you're going to ask me is, hey, Lee Brown, tell me about this disclosure statement. What does the seller know about the property? Well, here's a quick breakdown on the paperwork you're going to see on this resale home. Now, I point out a resale home because you should, first of all, know foreclosures are exempt from property disclosures. New construction does not have property disclosure statements. So going into this, we're automatically just talking about a normal house being sold by regular sellers going to regular buyers. Now, there's a couple of different disclosure forms. The first one is the easy one to gauge. That's the lead-based paint disclosure form. It is for properties built prior to 1978. This is a federal form. What you should know about lead-based paint is that some sellers do not know if their house has lead-based paint. If it was built prior to 1978 and it has not been painted since then, then we might have a whole different set of issues in addition to lead-based paint. Let's be honest about that. Most houses since 1978 are gonna have a couple layers of paint that you're dealing with. If you want the sellers to investigate it, that's going to cost you a pretty penny. And if you want to remediate it, you should know the feds are involved in that. So you have to use somebody who is certified as a lead-based paint specialist. Not everybody wants to go through all of that, but as a buyer of properties, and here in Concord, we have a lot of historic homes. You've just got to know going in, if that's important to you, we're going to check it out. There is a brochure that we recommend to every buyer. It talks about lead-based paint in your home. And if you're curious about the problem with lead-based paint, it tends to kill brain cells. And so I'd like to suggest that if you have small children or dogs or anybody that gnaws on the windowsills, that's where you have an increased risk over maybe one solitary person in a property who doesn't really go near the paint. So just think about these things. But as your guide, I'm going to tell you this house may have it. If you want to check it out, here's the opportunity. Now that's the easy form. Now, if your house was built after 1978, you could ignore that whole part of the video. So here's the second form you're gonna see. It's called mineral oil and gas rights. Realtors tend to call it MOG. And when we talk about MOG, we're talking about the dirt under the house. And do you own all of the stuff in the dirt under the house? This became a problem in North Carolina some several years ago when it was disclosed that one of our large production builders had retained the rights to the minerals and gas under the property and forgot to tell all the buyers of the property about that. They didn't really forget they failed to disclose because there is a giant swath of North Carolina that does have great deposits of natural gas. And that's one of the things that this builder wanted to have access to in the future. And you're thinking, but Lee Brown, how in the world could they come through a neighborhood later and come up under my house? Well, if you don't have the rights to that, you have signed away an opportunity to fuss later, which by the way, is why you read all the documents you sign at closing. You ask your realtor good questions and don't just do this when you're getting the terms of service. Read it all before you click, click, click. So that mineral oil and gas rights is the chance for the seller to tell you if they have sold the underlying rights or if they were sold prior to them. Many don't know. So when you see on this form that the seller says, I don't have the foggiest idea, that's what that no representation block means. Well, it could also mean the seller is a lawyer and was not going to tell anyway. But you can look on the title policy. What you're looking for is an exception on title that would say that the mineral oil and gas rights have been retained. This is a new-ish space to us in North Carolina, but great information is available out of Texas on this because they have been dealing with this for a long time due to the oil wells in Texas. And frankly, as we look at the future and we look at the scarcity of resources, I do believe this is going to become even more important. Should add in a fun fact here, did you know that Cabarrus County, North Carolina, where I am, was the site of the first discovery of gold in the United States? That's right. Long before California, we had gold discovered here. John Reed found it and had this giant nugget. He used it as a doorstop. And when they realized it was gold and not fool's gold, that's how Reed Gold Mine came into existence and why we have so many old gold mines throughout this area. Now let's talk about the big one. The third big form is the RPD or Residential Property Disclosure Form. This is going to be several pages where the seller has the chance to tell the buyer what's wrong with the house, what's been discovered and not fixed, what's been discovered and fixed and is still visible, it's basically their chance to be honorable about the house. When they're looking at this with me as their agent, we will look at an item 
and the seller has three options. Yes, I know of a problem that has not been addressed. No, I don't know of anything, and no representation means I ain't telling, or I don't know. Now, any seller who checks no representation for anything is essentially pleading the fifth on their house. We will see investors do this because they've never lived in it. They don't have a way to know. We will see estate sales do this because the same reason they haven't lived in it, they don't have that information. And we see lawyers check it because lawyers do lawyer things. So on this form, the seller has an opportunity to tell you things. You should know this. Some people are doing the best they can. They just don't know a lot about their houses. It's one of the biggest frustrations as a realtor that I can ask somebody, how old is this roof? And they say, I think it's as old as from when Jane was pregnant. All right, that's not helpful. I wasn't there. They don't realize what year it was. And as a buyer, you'd like to know so you can calculate some time frames or have better questions to ask or some calculations for your future budgeting. Some sellers really just don't know. Now, some know and don't want to tell. Now, that's one of the big concerns that you may have as a buyer is what if you're buying a house from a seller who knows things and doesn't tell the truth? That is why, friends, in North Carolina, we have this due diligence period, which is for investigations. That's when you do your home inspection. And a seller who doesn't know anything or doesn't tell anything is an even bigger reason to hire a home inspector to check behind them. However, even if the seller filled it out, you still want your home inspector to check everything out. Now, here's why. Now, I'm an old married person, so some of y'all might not know this, but I'm not aware of the online dating world except anecdotally and through my friends who are going through that solo again period in their lives. When they're looking at the possibilities on the app, they're sitting there swiping and swiping. They say, oh, this one looks nice. And then they meet them for a cup of coffee and say, this does not match at all because the dating apps are built on what the users put in for inputs. And so is our disclosure form. And so sometimes people tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And some people say, well, let me just fudge around the edges here. That's why the disclosure form at best should be taken with a grain of salt and just used as a guide as you go into the inspection and investigation process. Now, all of that sounds really important and heavy, and it is because the house, you want to be sparkly about it and you want to love it and paint it and make it perfect. I, as your realtor, want to make sure it's a really good investment and that you're not inheriting anything you're not aware of. Now, you should know any house that you buy is going to have things that break the day of closing. Dishwashers are known specifically for dying right after closing. No idea why they get spiteful, I guess. Water heaters will do the same thing. So you just have to know buying a house means things will break and they're going to break. But we want you to have as much information as possible going in. And when I'm also guiding you on selling that house, I'm going to encourage you to tell as much truth as you can because you want the buyer to go in knowing as much as possible. And so if you look at that dating profile, again. Maybe the picture's not great. Somebody's still going to think it's wonderful. And that allows you to narrow down and get the right fit sooner. That's what the disclosure statement is for. It allows us to be honorable in our community, telling the truth so somebody else can make their best decision. That's just a couple of our forms. If you have questions about buying a house in Concord or Cabarrus County, you call me. My team and I will walk you through. And if you want to sell, you better be willing to be transparent and tell the truth because we're going to market the heck out of that house. We want you to be seen as a hero to the other side.